stepping on the alternator. Doesn't say not to, right? Alright. And get up here. Boom. Woo wee. So there they are next to each other. Obviously you can see the uh, 335 unit is quite a bit bigger. And uh, so there you go. So that is what uh, the intercooler looks like. Now, again, I really, really, really suggest um, running a catch can um, to make sure that you're not getting oil and other BS inside of your intercooler, which is exactly what's happened here. Um, so catch can, catch can, catch can, guys. Can't stress it enough. So here is what the manifold and the intercooler looks like once you pull the supercharger off of there. Um, it's kind of crazy that Sprintex has been able to develop an intercooler that flows as well as it does. I know, of course, initial testing and everything, I didn't pull the intercooler out, but I know other people who have, and photos of it make it seem really restrictive, but luckily it is not. So here's the back of the uh, the 335 unit pulled off, and I'm doing this that way you can kind of see the uh, the twin screws in there. And then here's what it looks like from underneath. The big surprising point for me is how small of an area it is that the air comes through. I thought it would be pretty much the size of the intercooler, but it's not. It's pretty small, kind of rectangular hole here. And you can, of course, see the twin screw uh, pieces in there. And then, of course, here's just another overview shot of the manifold and intercooler. Okay, so let's take a look at the, uh, the rear elbow here. Um, so on the back, you can basically see uh, where, boost kind of, or where boost control and everything comes in at. Um, otherwise, it's a pretty basic, uh, simple setup here on the back. But you can see that valve open up, yay. And that valve goes right here so that way you can kind of see how all of it uh, goes together.